everyone. Welcome back to the channel. What you're looking at here is a mini yard Christmas tree I built using an ESP32 and WLED. It's fully synced with the rest of my holiday lights. But this didn't start as a do-it-yourself project. It actually started as a cheap Black Friday LED tree with metal frame and some mystery controller with lights I couldn't figure out and or get working with WLED. Instead of fighting it, I decided to rebuild the whole thing. In this video, I'll show you how I did it, what worked, what didn't, and how you can do something similar yourself. Let's dive in and I'll take you on a tour. My original plan was to reuse the lights that came with this tree. That would have been far faster and a lot cheaper. I hoped I could remove the old controller, install an ESP32 controller with WLED on it, and it would work as planned. But after tracing the wires, testing signals, and probing with a meter, it became clear these lights were not addressable in any useful way that I could figure out. There was no clean data line. The data and the ground wires looked like they were soldered together. And there was no clear LED protocol, so WLED could not even communicate with anything. At some point, you just have to decide. Do I keep fighting proprietary hardware, trying to reverse engineer it, or do I rebuild it the right way? The good news? The metal frame itself was actually decent for this build. So I scrapped the original LEDs and the controller and kept the frame. And I decided to restrand the tree using the WS2812B seat pixels with an ESP32 controller running WLED. I also decided to double the pixel count to get better saturation. I went from 4 inch spacing to 2 inch spacing, which went from 355 LEDs to 698. Here's the materials I used for the build. Nothing fancy or exotic. Let me introduce the mural board that I use for planning these types of videos. This is the section of my mural board, what I used to do all the holiday features and things like that. But I'm gonna focus just on this area here around the uh, yard Christmas tree. Here's the component list that I used. So we have the metal yard tree, like I showed before. This is the original tree that it came with. And you can see that uh, it was pretty easy to assemble. Very few parts that came with it. as the springs for the tension, and it was pretty easy to, to assemble and, and put together. Not a great tree, but it's an okay tree for this project. And of course, a roll of WS2812 seat pixels. I bought a thousand LED roll. The uh, 12 volt, 10 amp power supply, ESP32 controller. You need a buck converter because the D1 Mini ESP32 is 5 volt, so you don't want to fry it with the 12 volt. So you got to step down from 12 to 5 volts there. And then you need about 10 feet of uh, power injection cable uh, to go from the power supply up the tree to the top where the other end is by the star. And then you need some three pin waterproof pigtail connectors. And I use some nylon string for consistent tree leg spacing. I'll show that in a little bit. And then a small ESP project box to put the ESP in and the butt converter all together in a nice little project box. Then some zip ties, I used four inch. Small weather resistant enclosure of some sort. You can plug all this in outside with a extension cord and keep it dry. And then you're gonna need uh, some marine grade heat shrink and some nine inch yard stakes uh, is what I used. The build itself was very hands-on. I ran the pixels vertically up the tree and secured them with zip ties. I tried for good spacing, counting every pixel, making sure that I had 43 LEDs on each string and four across the bottom where the serpentine loops back up. Here's a close-up of how I wrapped the pixel strings to the top of the tree. The frame had a really nice pre-configured top to separate the original lights and it worked perfectly to wrap the pixel strings around securely. I used nylon string to evenly space on the metal frame. Without this, the light strings would be uneven. They would pull against each other and become uneven around the edges. So I measured the diameter of the base, calculated the circumference, right? Diameter times pi, 3.14, and divided by 15 total number of light strings, which was roughly around 8.125 inches in this case, or eight and eight inches between each leg. And then I measured each leg and tried to get it as exact, tried to get it as exact as I could. And then I looped the nylon around at the correct distance. This kept the spacing more even. Hard to tell from this angle, but basically you can see that the tree 
base bottom here is up just a little bit from the ground. So when I pull these down with the stakes that I'm gonna put around this, then it'll pull all of these just the right tension. So I made sure that I put a zip tie to the spring, which I might do something different with this next year. And I zip tied the spring there, and then I made sure that these were eight and an eighth apart. And then I made sure that there were four lights in between and that these matched approximately the same way. And I counted each one of these on every single string to make sure they were all 43 lights on every string. And then four there, of course, gotta skip that one and then four all the way across wherever they connect like that. Something that may not be obvious at first look, but I made sure that every single one of these seed pixels was facing out when I strung them up. So I just pulled them down like this with my finger and made sure every one of them was facing out. Cause you can see that there's a smaller backside and it does illuminate, but not as bright as that does. And sometimes they get a little twisted, but eventually they sort themselves out. As long as you get them pulled straight down, like right there's a twist you can see in one. So, but I made sure that they were all, all the way down to the bottom, all going facing out. I didn't document every step of this build. I kind of learned as I went, which is actually why I wanted to make this video. Once you see this approach, the rest of it I think is pretty doable for most do-it-yourselfers. Let's go back over to the mural board and talk wiring because this part trip people up sometimes. I'm using a 12 volt 10 amp power supply but the ESP32 and the pixels need different voltages. Here's what's happening. These are 12 volt WS2812 seed pixels, not 5 volt. So the 12 volt power supply actually has three outputs. The first one goes to the butt converter, which steps down from 12 volts down to 5 volts for the ESP32. A really important note here is to make sure you turn the rheostat to 5 volts using a multimeter to test uh, turning counterclockwise slowly before connecting to the ESP32 controller. Otherwise, you're going to have 12 volts running through that thing and you might fry your board. The third output is a power injection line that connects to the opposite end of the pixel string all the way up to the end where the starlight is since the string threads through it. The ESP32 does not power the pixels. It only provides the data signal. Since all power comes from the PSU, a common ground really isn't necessary here. The power injection line carries no data, just the 12 volts and the ground. It makes a huge difference in keeping the colors consistent across the whole tree. Before I put the power injection cable on, half the string was turning red when I had it on orange. But once I put the power injection in the other end, it fully lit at 100% all of the lights up without any noticeable color degradation. Once everything was wired, I flashed WLED onto the ESP32 using install.wled.me and added it to my existing setup. From WLED's point of view, this tree is just another device, which makes syncing effects incredibly easy. If you already got WLED running elsewhere, this part is pretty straightforward. In WLED preferences, Go down and make sure you have it set to WS28 1X, set it to the 15 milliamp seat pixels and GPO, GPIO 16. Then they go back and then go into the 2D matrix and I prefer the look of just the 1D strips myself. You can use the 2D matrix if you want, but I don't think there's very many to select from and I like the look of the 1D better. And then go back and then set the sync group to receive. In my case, I have all my holiday lights set to sync group one. And this is the final result. A store-bought yard decoration turned into a fully addressable, fully synced WLED element that blends right into the rest of my holiday display. The big takeaways here, I'm not going to fight the proprietary controllers. If the structure is solid, I'm going to rebuild the electronics. Uh, it's almost always worth it. If this helped you, let me know in the comments. And if you want a deeper follow-up with diagrams or measurements, I'm happy to do that. Just hit me up. I'm pretty fast to respond. If you want to do some self-exploring, I put a link to my mural board in the description, along with some of the links to the products I used. Thanks for watching. Happy lighting and have a blessed day.